Okay, students, uh, as you can see here, I played a little bit around with my HUD a bit uh, as the last video was recording. But now it's time to make sort of our first enemy so that our ship has something to shoot at and something to do. So I'm going to go to our previously made blueprint folder. I'm going to make a new folder. I'm going to call it enemies. And in this enemies folder, I'm going to uh, create a blueprint class. And the type of blueprint we're looking for here is pawn because uh, we need to move up to the same level at least that the player is. Um, and we want, we want this to have some AI and we want it to be able to move and some other stuff. So pawn is the level we're dealing with in this game. Everything, just about everything will be pawns. Uh, in this pawn, I'm going to call uh, enemy underscore base underscore BP. So this is the enemy base blueprint. And the reason we're doing this is we're going to learn in a later video about inheritance. And we're basically going to build all of our enemies on top of this enemy. So I'm going to go ahead and open this enemy. You can see what we got. We got ourself. We got our default scene route. And a couple of other things, but not, not too much to go on here. So I'm going to go ahead and add a static mesh to this. And I'm going to call this enemy mesh. And I want to put the effort in on naming everything because we're going to inherit these and use them again and again. Uh, because we're going to have different enemies and different enemy types. And I'm going to go ahead and just make it a uh, one meter cube here. And I'm perhaps going to scale it down a little bit and give it, uh, I like gray as our default material here, but uh, just because I think it'll look a little better, I'm going to rotate it um, a smidge in each direction to put it sort of up on its end, something like that. That looks fine. Um, and I'm also going to add a collision box. I'm actually going to use a sphere collision and uh, have it be a child of the enemy mesh here. I'm going to call this just the collision. Uh, and I'm going to scale that until it sort of fits our dude inside of it. That's about right. Now, this collision we're not going to use for much. We're going to use it for one very specific interaction. But for the most part, we will actually be using the mesh. So I'm going to go ahead with these pieces made and go to my event graph. So uh, the first thing I want to do is make some variables here. So I'm going to make a new variable and call it enemy health. And once again, this is going to be an integer because we want to, I want to deal with whole numbers. Uh, and I'm going to make another variable and call it score value, which is the amount of score killing this enemy will give me. So I'm going to comp uh, compile both, and I'm going to make my default enemy health 1, which is going to stand for being hit once, and we can always change that. And my default score value, I'm going to make 10. So if I kill an enemy, I get 10 points. Easy. So let's look at uh, what we want to do here. So for first, uh, we're going to use a, a function that we haven't used before. So uh, primarily, we were you'd probably think of something like, well, maybe we'll use the collision box and we will wait for an event when, say, uh, the, so we'll say like an event collision when uh, we get hit or we're overlapped and maybe we cast to the twin projectile, right? And we want to make sure that's the other actor. So we're being hit by a twin projectile. And then we're going to take damage and do stuff. Well, here's the problem. When you cast to something, it has to still exist. And if we go back and uh, look at how our twin stick projectile and our twin stick BP is, is created, there's a bunch of stuff going on here. 
Uh, it's a little confusing to look at, but basically, whenever this projectile hits something, it first checks, is the thing that I'm hitting valid? Does it still exist? And then if it is, it asks, am I valid? Do I still exist? And, it, and then it asks this branch here, it's asking, is it not me? And is it simulating physics? And if it is, it adds that push impulse, that push that we get when we shoot those boxes, and then it destroys itself. Notice at all cases, it destroys itself. If the target I'm hitting isn't valid, if I'm not valid, um, and then also if the target isn't physics, it destroys. So our uh, projectile here ceases to exist very often, very quickly. So we get hit by the twin stick projectile, which then stops to exist. And then when we try to start doing stuff like how much damage we should take and whatnot from the twin stick projectile, it doesn't exist anymore. And we're going to get a bunch of errors. It also is a lot of calls. And one thing we learn is that casting uh, is actually quite um, bad for optimization if we can avoid it. So instead, we're going to look for a new event called damage. And this is the built-in game damage event from Unreal. You can write your own version of this, but there's a number of different types. You can see here there's point damage, which is pretty much for your uh, hit scan weapons. You've got radial damage, which is basically your AoE radius damage. And then we'll just have any damage, apply damage. So this says apply damage, but we actually want to look here for we want the event damage. So let's see here. So I right at the top here, we have game damage event any damage. So this is when my enemy takes any damage, we're going to do a thing. Well, what are we going to do? Well, first, we're going to set our health. We made ourselves have health. We're going to set our health to a number. Well, what do we want to set it to? Well, this damage here is a float of how much damage is being sent at us. Now, our health is an int, so we have to get rid of these uh, decimal points. Now, we could have made our health values um, into floats instead, which would have been cleaner, but then we would have had to fix them into ints for our HUD. So at some point, you're going to have to do what I'm doing here, which is truncate. So what truncate does, if we put our mouse over it here, is it rounds it towards zero. So uh, 1.6 becomes one, negative 1.6 becomes negative one. Now, yes, this means it's basically always rounding down, uh, but this doesn't really matter for us because we're gonna be making our damages whole numbers anyway. This just gets rid of the decimal point for us. And what we wanna do is we want to uh, subtract. So what are we subtracting? We are subtracting our health. I'm going to put this guy on the top. Minus the damage we take becomes our new health. So whenever we would take damage, it's going to set that as our new health. Uh, now, next, you may be tempted to go to your event tick, right? And have it constantly check whether or not we have less than zero health to destroy us. But that, again, causes a lot of ticks, causes bad optimization. You only really need to check to see if you're dead when you've been damaged. So I'm going to drag over here. Uh, and what we want to do is we want to check to see if... Uh, our health is less than zero. And again, we could compare int. We could also just drag the health out. So I'm going to drag out get enemy health. And I'm going to ask the question less than or equal to. So is our enemy health less than or equal to zero? And if it is, it gives us this lovely Boolean, which we can make a branch. So we ask ourselves here, Anytime we're damaged, here's our branch. I'm going to clean this up just a little bit. And uh, what do we want to do? Well, all the things that we do when we're dead. So 
One is, I like to, just on the off chance that two bullets instantly kill us in the same moment, uh, and somehow we are dead more than once, I always like to, if we have less than zero, so aka true, so we are dead, we're going to do once. We're going to do this once. No double points, no double anything. We're just going to say a do once. And then this time, this will be the one time we cast to the twin stick pawn. Because what do we want to do? We want to give us some score. So when we do this, I don't have a way to connect because we're not colliding. So we have to get player pawn when we cast. And as the twin stick pawn, we want to get the player score. So here's our player score. And what do we want to do with the score? Well, we want to add to it. So I'm going to hit plus. And what do we want to add? We want to add the value of our, so we're going to get score value. So we're going to add the value of what it was for killing the enemy. And then again, as the twin six bond, we're going to set player score. And so our new score is equal to our old score plus the value of this enemy. So now that we've gotten our score, what do we want to do? Well, we want to play an explosion, make it so the enemy dies, uh, and destroy the actor. Now, we could make this different for enemies and come back here and make these changes, um, which we may do in the future. But for right now, just for posterity and cleanliness and all that, I'm going to put it in here, which is uh, we're going to spawn emitter at location. That's going to be our explosion. So let's see here. We have an explosion. We need a location. That location is easy. We can get uh, location. So we're looking for get actor location because we want us and we ourselves. So that works. It's going to create an explosion. While we're at it, we can play sound at location, same location, and go ahead and play an explosion. I'm going to use the Q so I have some variety. And then our very last thing is we are finally going to destroy the actor because they're dead. So it creates an explosion, it plays a sound, and they die. Now, I moved this over to the side here because I want to... Um, give this its own comment. So I'm going to select it here, right click and create a comment. Uh, what to do when enemy is dead. And then if I want to be fancy, I can do the same over here. And I can say this is what happens when enemy takes damage. Okay, we have one more corner case, which is what this collision box is for, which is what do we want to happen when the player runs into uh, this? And I would say our player ship is going to be bigger than our enemy ships. We want them to be swarms in some way. So I'm just going to have it instant kill, uh, but it's also going to send damage back. So here we want a collision selected. And I'm going to call an event on collision begin overlap. And I made it just a little bit bigger, if you recall. So basically, if the ship touches that, that circle, this guy's going to blow up. So how do we blow up? Well, this time and this time only, we're going to cast two twin stick pawn. Because that's the only person we care about colliding with us. And we make sure that they are the other actor. And then this time, I'm going to apply damage. Now, this won't do anything yet, but we're going to send damage back at the player. So I'm going to say, if I collide, I know my player has 100 HP. So here's 10 damage sent back at the player. Who is the damaged actor? The twin stick pawn is who is getting damaged. You'll notice there's some other stuff here like event instigator and there's damage types that you can create if there's environmental damage or you can create, you know, fire damage and lightning damage and poison damage and all that stuff that do different things. But here, all that's really essential is knowing who is taking the damage and how much. And then 
we're just going to uh, set enemy health because that's this guy right here, enemy health, we're going to set it to zero because it collided with the player. Now, really important here, we did this awesome thing of what to do with the enemy's dead. Well, if our health is zero, we can just fly down over here and reuse this whole bit. So to keep everything clean, I can comment this up too and say uh, on collision with player. Let me zoom in on that so you all can get one more good look at it. All right, so we're gonna compile. Now, none of this is gonna work yet. Well, the collision will work, but the shooting at an enemy won't work because while we have, we have something that happens when we take damage, nothing deals damage yet. So we need to go into our twin stick projectile and we need to basically slide a apply damage in here. Now, where we want to slide it in is right here. It's kind of weird it's on this one. Because this is, is our bullet valid? Yes. Is the, the object we're hitting valid? Yes. Is it applying physics? No. So we're going to come off here on the false and type apply damage. Okay. Uh, and it's still connected to the destroy actor because we still want it to kill the bullet but we don't want it to be probably physics unless we create an enemy with physics, but that's all pretty much all of our enemies won't have physics on them. They'll be AI and doing some other stuff. Now this will work. We're going to go ahead and say that our bullets deal one damage by default. We might change that in the future. Um, in fact, there's probably ways to change that on spawn that we can do. We could even make this a variable for later. In fact, I will do that right now. Let's promote this to a variable. And we're going to say uh, it's called base damage, which is great. So it's the base damage of our twin stick projectile. I'm going to compile it. It's set to 1 by default. But as I mentioned, we need to know who we're damaging. So this damage actor needs to connect to other. It's the only one that lights up here because it knows that's what you're looking for. It's other. So the other is the actor that we're hitting with a bullet, and we're going to send one damage at it. And go ahead and compile and now we have uh if we go into our enemy folder we have our little default enemy dude i'm gonna move him up a little bit so he is above because he doesn't have movement or anything yet these are basically mines if you think of them right the, the simplest of enemy is just a mine that i can run into or i can shoot now that they exist and i hit play I should be able to come up here, and if I hit one, it blows up, it makes the noise, and I gained score because it died. And also, if I shoot one, it blows up uh, and also gives me the score. Now, uh, we may want to play with the size, play with the type of effects we have, play with the sounds. Uh, but this works. You'll notice I didn't take any damage yet, and that's because we haven't created damage for the player. So our very last step to make everything function here is to go back into our twin stick pawn. But this video has run a little bit long, so we're going to go ahead and add that damage bit that makes it so our player can get hurt in the next video, and perhaps we'll even add a game over for when the player's HP hits zero.